So what you're looking at is a 2014 uh, Freightliner Cascader, which has got a diesel Detroit engine, right? Um, and the problem that it has got is that um, it has got an emissions failure. So as you can see, it has got a, a Mozambican plate. It is from Mozambique, not a Zimbabwean truck. But pretty much what has happened to this truck is when it was on its way from um, Mozambique all the way to uh, Botswana, it developed a malfunction on the emission system. So they tried to eliminate that system. They tried to play around with that system. Um, and unfortunately, uh, the car started to misbehave. So the story here is that um, it has got an emission system that has been breached, an emission system that has been damaged. Uh, our job today is going to be really to uh, deal with that emission system proper and uh, make sure that we restore its power and its performance and also its correct fuel co uh, consumption. So what's happening is um, people are importing these trucks from America. They bring them here into Africa. Uh, or in, into our country, which is Zimbabwe. We are an African country. Um, now, when these trucks come through, sometimes the reason why they're being sold from wherever, wherever they're coming from is because of a, a, an emission malfunction, uh, where it's actually very expensive to deal with the emission systems of these trucks. So uh, what better way to deal with the truck than to just sell it if it has a point if it is if it has reached a point where uh the cost of fixing it are very expensive so this is the t some of your typical situations that happen um and when they get to to here in, in in africa or when they get to our country sometimes just because people don't fully understand how to properly deal with the system they end up creating even more problems we have seen cases where people start to temper around with the turbocharger people start to temper around with the uh, egrs making the truck even worse where it was just a simple dpf or a simple def problem but that has actually been made worse by people who are tempering around so with this particular truck i'm gonna lay down the symptoms that it has been uh, showing so the first thing is that it was um showing loss of power where he puts his foot on the ground but it doesn't feel like it wants to go anywhere it doesn't feel as powerful as it should right that's number one so number two the next thing was high fuel consumption right and so so simply because it's driving in lip mode where it's not giving its um uh, full energy into drive it just wants you to go to the next uh, service center definitely you're going to be putting your foot down too much so it's definitely going to consume more fuel so that's 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 what also um because of the fact that it is trying to rectify its emission uh issue it's also going to consume a lot more fuel i'm going to dive into that as we go through the video right then the third issue is that it was showing those emission lights now there is a light that it shows a dpf light which it is which it shows um and this was illuminate illuminating in the in the instrument class and also a check engine light um so those were the main issues that this uh, truck was showing um it would also show a stop light um which will just tell you that look we have a, a very catastrophic issue you have to stop the truck right um so this is the situation that we that was happening with the truck and um usually when you find yourself in a situation where um you've got a, a, a DPF problem on these trucks. Um, I usually recommend people to do what is called the regeneration, right? Um, in fact, let me just go through through um, all the solutions uh, for you to understand, the solutions that are available for you, which you should um, get into. But before I get into the solutions, I think maybe it's much more valuable for me to start by telling you what causes emission failure so that at the end of the day, you really understand um if or you really understand the best solution that's going to work uh, for you uh, on this truck, right? Because usually the solutions uh, work hand in hand with what has caused them, what has caused the problem, right? So, so pretty much there are th in our experience, we've seen that there are three causes of, of, of failure uh, of these DPF systems, right? So the first major cause is your driving habit, right? So first of all, let me just explain what a dpf is um so a dpf mainly is a system that filters the soot that is um, coming from your diesel engine it's believed that this diesel um 
trucks uh, or diesel vehicles in general are polluting the environment so much. So they've been mandated to come with this um, emission equipment which is on the exhaust. Um, so just like you you notice that all the your other filters such as your diesel filter such as your uh, air filters your and so forth and your oil filters you change them regularly but never have you heard that you're supposed to replace a di diesel particle filter after so many kilometers right well this is simply because it has got its own self cleaning mechanisms right it it knows that it this point it is now clogged so it's going to initiate a self cleaning process and that self cleaning process is called regeneration you understand so it does that because it's been programmed to do that the computer of the vehicle has been programmed to know that it is now time to do that regeneration process right and how it does its regeneration process is it does it uh, as you are driving so remember what i said that the, the one of the major causes for you to for that dpf to have an issue is your driving habit so if you use these um trucks for short journey trips right um you're definitely going to have an issue because we're saying that as it initiates that uh, self-cleaning process that regeneration process you're not giving it enough time to do so by driving it over a short distance right so let's say you're just doing your local short 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 journey work with this truck um maybe you just drive 20 minutes you just drive 10 15 minutes and then you pack it definitely you're going to see a problem with your diesel particle filter because you are not giving it plenty time to do that regeneration that self-cleaning process that it requires it takes quite some time it may even take up to an hour right um and just because you're driving it for short period of time for short journeys definitely you're going to have an issue where it is failing to complete that process and thereby clogging that system you understand so that's number one that's the first major cause of um of these emission systems to fail the second cause uh for these systems to fail is the quality of fuel that you're using right um now you find out that in your first world countries such as your United States, uh, Europe, uh, or even Japan or Australia, you see the kind of fuel quality that you find there is probably going to be better than the type that we use here in, in Africa. Um, you know, here in Africa, we've got a challenge of sometimes fuel shortages. So just because there is an issue of fuel shortage going on around, you see that you notice that um, you, typically people start to buy that black market fuel or fuel from the side of the road fuel you know and so forth so that pretty much causes issues uh, because we are saying that some of that fuel the way that it has been handled it hasn't been handled correctly um, so because it hasn't been handled correctly it's going to have contaminants so when it burns when it burns inside the engine um there are going to be some contaminants that are going to be coming from the engine as well they're going to stick inside the dpf when they stick inside the dpf you're going to have a situation where that dpf is going to clog now remember the person who made this dpf the dpf of this vehicle did not make it uh taking into account that you're going to be using horrible quality of fuel he expected you to use the right quality of fuel uh, so when those contaminants get inside the dpf there is no amount of self-cleaning process that's going to um, deal with that. That's going to properly uh, deal with that uh, clogging DPF. So this issue of um, bad fuel quality is not only in third world countries. It's not happening in third world countries. Sometimes even in your first world countries, because sometimes it also comes down to how you handle. Let's say you 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 store your fuel in um containers where you put petrol where you put all kinds of you know where you put other stuff in right so and then you put diesel later on obviously you're going to have issues the way that you handle that that diesel is definitely going to cause some issues with your dpf so that's number two that's the major other major cause of um a, a failing dpf is the quality of fuel that you you are using right now then then we go to the third one now, I'm pretty much going to say that um, the third cause is an unhealthy engine, right? Uh, what do I mean by an unhealthy engine? Now, an unhealthy engine is not going to uh, be efficient. It's not going to uh, create power efficiently. Why? Because you find out that it's making a lot more uh, pollution, a lot more uh, exhaust gases, a lot more ex exhaust fumes uh, than what the the dpf is is designed to 
to adequately deal with, right? So think of a situation where your injectors, your diesel injectors are putting more diesel than they should. So that that's a case where your injectors are malfunctioning, isn't it? That's going to have an issue with the with the DPF. Now think of a situation where your turbocharger is putting less air than it should. That means your turbocharger has got a malfunction. Uh, again, you're going to see in such a case, you're going to see your vehicle uh, producing more emissions than it should. So that's again going to have an impact on the diesel particle filter. So there are other issues too that cause um, uh, your, your, your vehicle not to perform very well, uh, particularly which are linked to failing air fuel mixtures. So I talked about injectors. I talked about uh, your turbocharger. There's also an issue of an EGR valve that is not cleaned regularly. Again, that's going to cause an issue downstream um on your dpf right um and again where you've got some leakages let's say your i've seen turbochargers which are leaking oil that oil gets into the exhaust it gets into the dpf and you've got an entirely different story uh so those are some of the the issues that cause uh, major causes that bring uh, a dpf failure and then the last one which is which i would say deliberate where people temper around with these things uh where they pretty much breach the dpf system and now you've got a problem so those are the major issues which we have seen to cause uh dpf issues and i want to get into the solutions because obviously the solutions that you are the solution that you are going to implement uh is definitely going to be affected by what has caused the problem now what do i mean by this now like for example um let's start with the first solution regeneration that's the first solution that i recommend if any, anybody to try who's got a problem with the dpf why do i recommend this one this is a very cheap solution to try uh i mean at the same time it is it is um it, it, it doesn't really hurt your pocket that's number one and also uh the fact that is the most recommended by the by the manufacturer right so now this solution is pretty much going to work if you are in a situation whereby let's say you don't you, the cause of your dpf is the fact that you are driving over short journeys right it's pretty much going to work right but what you just have to know is that after having Im implemented that solution you have to change your driving habits right you have to change your driving habits for this solution to hold right now if your your dpf has been bridged right if somebody has tempered around it they've bridged the dpf obviously this solution is not going to work regeneration is not going to work at all because we're saying there's nothing inside that dpf it's just a hollow tube so definitely it's not going to work because you have to first of all buy a, a dpf and then next you 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 can do your regeneration you understand so the next solution that's going to be available uh let's say that you've tried your regeneration it has of it it has failed i understand that in other countries you're going to find uh companies where they've got pressure washer systems where they put that dpf into a pressurized system they clean that whole system um and then after having have done that uh, obviously you still need to do your regeneration so that the the vehicle relearns the dpf and then you're good to go so that's another second solution that you can try out now like i said if your dpf has been breached you, this is not going to help again if you've got a situation where maybe your engine is unhealthy uh, again, th this regeneration process might not exactly work because at the end of the day, first of all, you have to f start by rectifying those issues that has caused the DPF to fail in order for uh, that's this process of regeneration of or cleaning of the DPF to actually work. Right Now, then the third um, solution that's available. So if your cleaning isn't working, your regeneration isn't working, maybe you, you are at a point where you have no choice but to think about buying a brand new DPF. Now, Obviously, solutions one, two, and three are going to be uh, mainly, I would say these are your go-to solutions for people in your first world countries where, let's say, uh, dealing with this DPF or eliminating this DPF or bypassing that DPF completely is completely illegal. Now, I'm from a country where this is completely legal. We are allowed to do this um and there is no problem whatsoever in fact i'll tell you that we are already uh assembling uh and manufacturing vehicles that come with no dpfs whatsoever or no def whatsoever so pretty much we're able to convert this this um this um trucks to non-dpf and that has got no legal implications and that is uh the solution that we we um 
specialize with. We are very good at implementing that solution. And that's the fourth solution I'm going to talk about. So before you um, implement any of the three solutions I've uh, listed above, right? Before you implement any of those three solutions, first of all, identify to find what has caused your DPF to fail, right? Because if you don't do that, you're going to find yourself in a situation where you're just chasing your tail, right? Um, because I've seen people work on their second, third DPFs, uh, and this is not a good place to be, right? You understand? Um, it's because they didn't fully understand what has caused that DPF to fail in the first place, right? So if it is as a result of your driving habit, like I said, change those driving habits. And then you, uh, after you've implemented a regeneration, uh, if it is as a result of a failing turbo or a failing, uh, f failing F fuel mixtures, something is going on with your injectors, fix that. And then you, 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 you do your regeneration or you buy a brand new DPF or you do that cleaning process, right? I've tried to put them in an order of least expense, right? Uh, those first three, of course, they are in the order of least expensive uh starting with the least expensive at the top uh and obviously buying a brand new dpf is the most expensive most expensive solution uh, and then if it's as a result of your bad fuel change the quality of fuel that you're using now it's probably different for it's probably a bit harder for a person who is in a country like ourselves uh in africa or in your third world country where you pretty much have got access to the horrible quality of fuel right uh, that's when we they say look guys you've got a third solution sorry a fourth solution on the table which is what we offer here the conversion to non-dpf the complete elimination of that dpf system it's not illegal in your country. It's not illegal in our country. So pretty much this is our go-to solution. Uh, why? Um, uh, because thinking about buying a brand new DPF, first of all, we are already, like I said, we are already making vehicles that don't come with DPF systems in the first place. And at the same time, um, knowing that buying a, you buy a brand new DPF and because of the quality of fuel you are using, again, you keep on having those same issues over and over again. So our solution here is to say we are converting those vehicles to non-DPF. Now, what are the uh, benefits? Now, there are a bunch of benefits that come with doing this, right? Uh, and I'm going to get, get into them. So the first benefit is that obviously you're going to see an, in, in, an improvement in power uh, and performance. Now, you are going to pretty much see this improvement because we are saying that um, your your exhaust is does not have any restrictions. At the same time, uh, that computer algorithm that forces that truck into limp mode will again be dealt with. So your car, your truck is just going to give uh, its maximum performance all the time uh, without regarding of that DPF system. That's number one. Number two, you are going to see that in terms of fuel consumption, that fuel consumption is going to improve. Remember that self cleaning process which I talked about. Uh, where it, it 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 clears that DPF system, it uses a lot of fuel to actually do that self cleaning process. So just because it doesn't do that anymore, you are going to see an improvement in fuel consumption, right? That's number two, right? And then number three, your engine is actually going to last longer. Why? Because you don't have any restrictions on the exhaust. The turbocharger doesn't like restrictions, and so does the engine doesn't like those uh, restrictions at all. So you are going to see these things working very well. They are going to be far much happier going forward. That's the uh, third uh, major benefit, right? So if you are interested in having this solution implemented on your truck, there are going to be numbers that are listed on, that are going to come out on the screen. You can contact us. You can send us an email. You can send us a message on Facebook. We should be able to help you with that. Now, I'm going to show you a video of us testing the truck that we did, which came from Mozambique. Um, just because it, it had come, it was on a tight schedule. It came in the morning. It was on a tight schedule. The next day, it was supposed to be in Botswana. So we had to work flatter out i think by the time we finished we had finished working the truck it was about midnight i want to power how much new power is motor the power still do it again what ah no it's not the first thing first thing i don't know about sick or no so i want to get a guy or what's the fun about sick i don't know i didn't know
Nice. 